On today's City Beat, we hit the streets in New York, Melbourne, and Shanghai to find out what's your favorite foreign film. We'll check out some of the highlights from the Shanghai Consumer Electronics Show. What are Huang Xiaoming, Zhao Wei, and Justin Lin doing in Hollywood? City Beat finds out. Hello and welcome to City Beat, where we have the latest in art, culture, entertainment, fashion, and lifestyle. Today we are going from Shanghai to New York, Melbourne, and Los Angeles to bring you some of the coolest stuff from around the world. You can also scan our QR code or check our official WeChat account for all your City Beat updates. I'm your host Audrey Liu. Let's start off by hitting the streets in New York, Melbourne, and Shanghai to find out what's your favorite foreign or indie film. It's summertime, and that means time for big blockbuster movies. But what are people's favorite foreign films? I'm hitting the streets to find out. I am Polish, so I like Polish movies. And I think the most popular right now from Poland is Ida, that got an Oscar. So. I guess I'm Chinese, so I really like Chinese films. So like, like action movies are fun. Wu Hu Chang Long, and I don't know the English translation. I'm actually German, so I like a lot of German movies. I don't know if you know Til Schweiger. Italian film La Vita è Bella with uh, Benigni. This is my Italian favorite. Uh, I am Love. Uh, it's an Italian film um, about a dynasty, about the clothing business. Just goes through the heritage, so. Just the history of the film, I think. Amicord, because Fellini made it so delightful for the whole seasons, the whole uh, the whole year in one city. In, I mean, one town. In Bollywood, so uh, all those films are what I make, and I love them. And which which films? Um, I don't know if anybody's seen it, but it's really done very very well in India. It's called Queen. Um, and it's about this young Indian girl who, who, who has a breakup um, right before her wedding, and she decides to go for her honeymoon alone. New Yorkers are going to be lining up to see foreign films this summer. There's no top answer, but they like movies that have a great plot and are captivating. Now, as for me, I don't really have one. I just like to see what's out there. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clemens. Hello from Melbourne and the South Melbourne markets. Well, we've come today to ask people what their favorite foreign film is. I don't know if it's a foreign film, but I like Slumdog Millionaire. That was good. Mamma Mia. Oh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, I don't know that I've got one. I don't often watch foreign films. A movie I saw not so long ago uh, was a movie called Encendie. And it was a uh, French-Canadian film uh, with a, a plot that was absolutely outstanding. Probably be an art house film called Delicatessen. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I don't know if it's Dutch or French. Um, it's just a really quirky film about a group of people that live above a butcher shop um, and all the crazy things that happen. Um, and it's just shot exquisitely and yeah, it's just a brilliant film. Favourite foreign? Well, I like a lot of Asian movies. Um, Let's see, film though. I like a lot of TV shows. It's okay to name a TV show. Um, I like a lot of dramas. So there's this one called My Love from Another Star, and it sounds really girly and romantic, but that one is probably my favorite. I just recently I went to see this movie Samba, which is a French movie, and I think that's one of my recent favorites. I'm really bad with no names. Um, the French one and the gentleman's in the wheelchair. 
What's it called? Uh, we're not Australian though. La vita è bella, Roberto Benini. Yeah, I can't say that because I'm Italian. <laughs> why did you choose, why choose that film? Uh, did you see it? Then, yeah, if you see it, you will know. It's um, it's about love and magic of life, and yeah, it's a wonderful movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Foreign films, they're largely dominated by European releases, but not entirely surprising considering that it's actually one of the most popular regions for foreign films seen here in Australia. I'm Andrew Moon, reporting for City Beat, now it's back to Shanghai. With digital filmmaking being more accessible, anyone anywhere can shoot a film and submit it into a film festival. So our question for this week's Word on the Street is, what is your favorite foreign film that is not Hollywood made? Let's go find out. <音>应该是灰姑娘就是哪个女孩都有一个公主梦嘛肯定都梦想着有一天能够像公主一样但是也并不一定非要王子带走呀自己做公主就好了就是自己努力成长的好一点<音> Rahujenchu 我最喜欢的电影是《速度与激情七》里面的故事情节安排的很紧凑还有就是它能够把刺激的场景跟温馨的情感搭配的很到位我喜欢看陈伟简奥斯汀然后傲慢与偏见这种因为我觉得当时那
the front camera, and the second one is the ultrasonic system. The camera localization, uh, do the localization of the car, so the car know where it is by the camera, and the ultrasonic systems take care that nobody uh, will be hit by the car. So it's one sort of like a kind of safety system. But what about the sensor? That's what we're doing with this ultrasonic system. So you see here the small dots in the bumper. Ah, the white dots? Yeah, the white dots. So these are the sensors? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. We have a, a little PC, it's very, very high integrated, inside the car. And that one measures the distance between the car and possible objects all the time. Uh, then we calculate if there's an object, and if there is, we will break. But I think a PC is not easy to carry for everyday use. So is, is there anything that I can carry with me every day so that I can control this car easily? Ah, you mean for control? Yeah, of course. Oh. That, that's what we're presenting here. We have this kind of smartwatch. So, a smartwatch? Yeah, oh, okay. so you can get outside the car and just use the smartwatch to control oh. the car. But if you want, you can also use a smartphone or even other devices. So I think it's actually challenging my boyfriend because parking is always a big problem for me. Another front runner in innovation of piloted driving is Audi. The company is showcasing its latest improvements in autonomous driving, remote control, and sensors at this year's CES Asia show floor. So, Stefan, basically, this car is a brand new model. So, what's so special about it? Special at this show car, we want to show all the technologies we are inventing at the moment for this for the e-mobility. This is the R8 e-tron piloted driving. It's pure electric driven, 450 kilometers in range, two engines at the rear axle with 170 kilowatt each, and the battery you can drive for 450 kilometers. Total power from the system is uh, 340 kilowatts. So this is the new technology, all included in this show car. So actually you mean with this piloted driving, that this car can automatically drive itself? It can drive automatically, but not with no one inside. Uh, because still the driver has the responsibility and always will have, because the legal regulations are not that far until now. For example, in the traffic jam, for you can drive until up to 60 kilometers per hour, you can drive really autonomously. But you still have to sit there and have to take over if there is any, any issue, because you never can control what the others are doing completely. Focusing more on the connectivity, Ford showcased the next generation of the company's Cabin Tech Sync 3.0, making seamless Bluetooth phone and personal audio electronics connected to the car. Now,我们现在有一个iPhone手机，然后我们通过USB隔这个车机去相连。那在看到这个盒子，实际上它并不是个盒子，而是真正的把所有车上的零件拆出来，把它放到一个演示杯里面。在这里，我们显示了网易云
and through the 2015 year, we will be fine-tuning and refining uh, the experiment. But to be honest, I'm really looking forward to that. Yes. Whether it's self-driving, integrated data in the dashboard, or next-generation driver displays, CES Asia showcased the latest in automotive technology, plus what consumers can expect in the near future. Well, CES Asia is always the event that shows you the future in ways you never imagined before. So next time, remember to save your date, come and have a visit, and welcome to the future. Now let's head to New York's Hudson River for an exciting lesson in stand-up paddle boarding. Many people venture out to the Hudson to see the Intrepid or take a boat cruise, but today I'm headed out onto open water with a different activity. What happens when you combine surfing, paddle boarding, and kayaking? The answer is stand-up paddle boarding. This fun activity uses a paddle and board and can be done on practically any open body of water. Whether you're doing it for leisure or want a new way to explore, you'll definitely get a workout. Get ready to engage your arms, legs, and core, all while enjoying the view. Are you bored with your typical summer activities? Well, then it's time to jump on a board, and I'm gonna be doing that today. I'm here at Manhattan Kayak Company with the owner, Eric. Eric, great to see you. Great to meet you, Christy. How are you doing? Good. It is a beautiful day, and to get out on that water, to go on a paddle board, tell me, why are people drawn to it? That everyone, I think, has a secret surfer inside of them, right? Totally we, we all do. <laughs> and, uh, and then, but it's bringing in the, the, uh, the elegance and the power of a paddle. And the options for stand-up paddle boarding are endless. That floatable platform goes well beyond either surfing or paddling. You can, you can float on it, you can swim with it, you can do yoga on it, you can do beach fit boot camp classes on it. It is summertime, we're in the peak season, so obviously people are gonna come out, but can you do this all year round? As long as the water doesn't freeze completely over, you're able to actually stand up paddle board year round, and as your skills develop, you get good enough to where you, almost, you never fall off once you're at a certain level, and then um, you barely get your feet wet. Unlike sitting in a boat and paddling, stand-up paddle boarding requires more practice. The stand-up paddle board, the learning curve uh, to be good on them, I'd say is su slightly steeper than, than the kayak because you have the element of balance. You have the elements of standing up, which is also the beauty of it because we call it walking on water. Before I hit the water, I have to master some basic paddleboard 101. Balance is key when it comes to stand-up paddle boarding. To warm up my body, I practice on a balance board. Now that my body's warmed up, up, Eric shows me some basic stand-up paddle boarding rise. strokes. From here, hinge forward and hinge back up. Yes, right there, good. You're gonna reach all the way back there, and then you're gonna go with your whole body, a nice broad arc, all the way from the back of the board to the front of the board. It's called a reverse sweep. That's it. Plus, if I need to stretch my arm and trip, I can, I can do that, you know, just like uh, exactly. a little bit of that. One team. Just like there's a variety of moves, the same goes for the style of paddle boards. Eric picks one that's perfect for a beginner like me. We're going to use this one for you because it's, it's a nice midpoint. So this is a great vessel that's very stable, um, but is a midpoint between the long boards, which are smooth and fast, and the shorter boards, which are highly maneuverable. Now it's time to take what I've learned and apply it to open water. You can actually almost toss it in. There you go. Yay! Are you ready for this? Here we go, kids? guys. Here's her entry point. Keeping the bottom arm straight. Beautiful. Oh, choke it up. Bottom arm. I was so excited to get out onto the Hudson that I forgot one important piece of safety gear. But that didn't stop me from getting back out there. This is freaking awesome. I'm totally doing this as like a sport. Yes, using the body weight to 
While I was definitely getting close to good form, I almost got close to falling in. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, I almost just tipped over. This is not as easy as it looks. Eric, I have to say that was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Fantastic. Well done, Chris. Thank you for showing me. And your body feels, how does it feel? Oh my God, it's it's like humming. It's like, it's a little, I'm, I've never been so happy to be on dry land, but <laughs> I'll be at, out there soon enough. At first, your body just gets that get, gets that vibration with the with the water, and then, but you got it. You got that full body. You got, you didn't, you didn't bend from the arm anymore, and I was so proud to watch you uh, hammer, it down, hammer it down and kettlebell up and and really put your strokes together. Hey, well done. Well, I had a good instructor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clemens. Now it's time for a short break, but when we come back, we'll head to LA to see what Huang Xiaoming, Justin Ling, and Zhao Wei are doing in Hollywood. Coming up next, we're off to Hollywood to find out what Huang Xiaoming, Zhao Wei, and Justin Lin are up to in Tinseltown. Three of the biggest celebrities in Chinese film, actor Huang Xiaoming, Zhao Wei, and Justin Lin made their way to Hollywood, where they'll be leaving their handprint in front of the famous TCL Theatre. So now, let's head to LA to take a look. Hi there, right now I'm in front of the TCL Chinese Theatre. Today, Justin Lin, the famous Chinese-American director, as well as Zhao Wei and Huang Xiaoming are gonna have their hand Being invited to perform this act is one of the highest honors that can be granted on a film star, no matter what country or region he or she is from. Of this film, Hollywood Ventures, um, it, it was something that I, I felt very fortunate. You know, I was approached, we wanted to do something, and I felt like you know, it was important to try to hopefully earn um, relationships and build this kind of the indie way. You know, so when I first talked to Bruno, I was saying that, you know, well, let's, let's see if there's an idea that we're excited about and see if we can actually get, you know, amazing partners. And I, I, I couldn't ask for more. I think Mr. Wan and, and Light, you guys have been unbelievable. And, you know, we went and, and with Zhao Wei, Wang Xiaoming, Tong Dao Wei, you know, I, I, am, I, am, I can't wait to keep working with you and, and, and growing with you and evolving with you because, you know, a lot of people you know, they, when, I, when, when I do interviews, they talk about Chinese stars. You're not Chinese star, you're, you're, you're stars, you know, and I can't wait to keep growing and, and make more projects with you. That's a big job. Yes. I just want to make sure it's what they use. I want to make sure it's a job. Welcome to America. Okay, time to go. This is a five-year-old film. It's a film called Sian 这两个月在美国的拍摄给我留下了非常深刻的印象，包括这个中国大剧院的门口，我们也在这里拍摄了一场非常重要的戏。祝福你们，前面的一对儿。Thank you。我是来找我女朋友的，你不会真的以为我是来跟你度蜜月的吧？开心点儿呗，你干啥呀？我也非常荣幸能够成为亚洲第一个女演员，能够把手印留在这个地方。以后未来的日子，我希望我每年都可以过来看看我的手印，拍个照片。Hi, I'm a Dao Wei. Have you been a more challenging Dao Wei? Fifteen years ago, I and Zhao Wei were two friends. We were both studying at the Beijing Film Festival. Then I was a little kid. 然后经过十五年的横冲直撞，就像我们的电影一样，不小心就稀里糊涂的撞到了好莱坞。然后今天可以在这个地方按手印，作为大陆的中国大陆的第一个男演员，我觉得我非常非常的幸运。Even more exciting, their film Hollywood Adventures, which is written and produced by Justin Lin, is due for release in China on June the 26th. 然后接下来的十五年，我想我会继续横冲直撞，继续我坚持我的梦想。最后，谢谢我的。祖国还有我的父母
给了我生命。So far, 238 of the world's most acclaimed film stars have left their handprints and footprints there since 1927. Today's milestone event brings the total number of Chinese film stars to have been so honored up to six from the previous three. This reflects the increasing number of exchanges and collaborations between the Chinese and American film communities. Of course, it is a big day for Justin, for Zhao Wei, and for Huang Xiaoming, as well as for the whole Chinese film industry. Zhao Wei reporting from Los Angeles. Well, that's all the time we've got for today's show. But join us next time when we meet Shanghai artist, designer, and musician Radic. Also, remember to scan our QR code or check our official WeChat for all your City Beat updates. I'm your host Audrey Liu. See you next time. Bye bye. On the next City Beat. From fashion designer to musician and artist, we talk to one of Shanghai's most creative forces, Redick. Here we have all the great movies, and here is where gathers all the famous stars: action, science fiction, suspense, romance. We have it all. Interested in authentic foreign movies? Stay tuned to ICS for high drama.